Hello Technology Grazier here and today we're going to be doing lesson 4 of the Batch series so if you haven't checked out any of the other lessons please check them out they go over all the basics of batch programming or otherwise known as uh, working in CMD. So today's lesson is going to be on copying and moving files and folders uh, we're also going to be covering some really cool tips and tricks to help you guys make really cool programs so uh, please step back and enjoy. Okay, so before we start, I want to let you guys know that I'm going to be using a program called Notepad++, which is basically Notepad on steroids. Uh, it's a free program. Links will be in the description. I highly recommend that you use it, but of course, you can also use Notepad. Uh, so all the code will be in the description, just in case you want to copy it. Uh, so what's the difference between copying and moving a file? Basically, copying is duplicating the file. Moving is actually moving where you, the file is. So if I were to copy this to the desktop, it duplicated it. If I were to move it, uh, actually let me copy it over the desktop. If I were to move it into this folder over here, it would actually uh, go from the desktop into the folder. So that's the difference between uh, copying and moving. Nice to keep in mind while using these commands. Uh, so to start off, let's go with add echo off, uh, and then let's use the copy command. The copy command works like this. We type in copy, we type in the source, and we type in the destination. So the source is the file or folder that you want to uh, copy. So let's right click on the my program right here that I want to copy. Uh, let's find the location here, which is under E, which is correct. We can also go up here and we can find out it's under E. And it's called multiplay.exe, just like that. And the destination is where we want to copy the file to. So in this case, the desktop. So let's just click on anything on the desktop here. We find out that the desktop is C slash users slash Justin slash desktop. Just like that. So that's all we have to do. Let's pause it and run it. Here we can say one file copied and it did copy it over the desktop. Now if you want to move a file, very very similar, use type move, just like that, run it, it'll move it from the USB onto the desktop. Okay, so now let's, let's have a little bit more fun. Uh, we can actually use this thing called xcopy, which is a lot more cool than copy, allows us to do a whole bunch more features. Now we're actually going to have a look at it in the CMD here. Uh, so if we go and type in xcopy slash question mark, it'll list all the different uh, switches and everything for xcopy. Let's also go and find the copy command. Oops, that was a fail. Uh, just like that. You can notice that copy doesn't have as many switches, can't do as much as xcopy, which is built into Windows as well. Uh, it has the ability to copy folders, directories, all these really cool things. It even has the ability to find the newest files and just copy the newest files. So that's really cool. So go and check out xcopy. It's a lot better. I recommend it. Uh, there's, there's some disadvantages, and I'll show you how to get around that. Uh, so if we run the program here, it will copy it to the desktop. If we run it again, it will ask us if we want to overwrite the file, and that is normally a really good idea. Let's say you were uh, making a program, you can actually overwrite a desktop or a whole folder, or maybe even System32 by accident. So uh, it is a good feature, but once you've perfected your code, you don't want that. A way to turn this off is using the Y switch, which is what I found in CMD. By typing X copy slash question mark, I was able to find uh, that Y will suppress the overwrite. So if we run this here, now it didn't ask us to overwrite, it just automatically overwrote. So that's really cool. Uh, let's combine our knowledge to make something a little bit more cool. But first, let's uh, cover one really important thing. If you want to run this program on more than one computer, it's really important to make this universal. So if, for example, if I were to run this on my sister's computer, her username is not Justin, so it will definitely not work. Uh, easy way to get by this is to use 2% signs and type in username. This works anytime you need the user of the uh, of the person that's using the computer. So for example, uh, here it will replace username with the current user. And to just double check this, let's type in echo and username, just like that. So it will copy the uh, file to the desktop and it will also type it will also echo the user name that's uh, logged on right now. Uh, which it worked. Here it says one file copied and it says Justin and it actually did copy. So that's all good. Another really cool thing is let's say you're using uh, USB to copy files onto multiple different computers. Uh, your USB night, not, might not always show up as E. One easy way to fix that is to go to percent signs and then uh, CD, which is current directory, which you can use for programs too. It will basically use the current directory that this program is running in. So you can see here that video.bat is actually running under E. So it will take E and replace it with this right here, which is exactly what we want. We can run that, and you can see here that it actually ran E uh, multiplay.exe. Uh, now let's combine all our knowledge to make a really cool program that might be actually useful uh, to you. Uh, in the summer, I, I had to uh, install a whole bunch of programs on a whole bunch of laptops. 
Um, so the easiest way I did this was make a really simple program that will copy all the programs I needed onto the desktop and then start them and then when they're done, uh, delete them. So how I did this is I used xcopy then I did a start command and I started the program that we just copied to the desktop. Just like this and I used uh, multiplay.exe. So that will basically copy to the desktop and start it. So let's try that. So copied and started the program. So now at this point I could actually remove my USB and it will uh, run. Now after I wanted also to delete it. So let's say I did del for delete and let's uh, delete the file here. It won't actually work and the reason why is because it's actually running the program while it's trying to delete it which won't work. Uh, the easy way around this is instead of start let's use something called call. Uh, which will basically call the program into this program and it will basically wait for this program to finish and then go to the next line of code. So it'll wait for multiplay.exe to terminate and then move on and then delete it. So which is what we want to do. Uh, so, oops, I type stacks there, okay. So let's run it. Uh, you can notice that the program is actually paused while multiplay is running. And as soon as we close it here, it will continue and it will delete the file. Uh, so I guess that concludes this video. Please comment, rate, subscribe. Another really cool thing, before I end actually, uh, if you want to rename a file, you can actually use move. Uh, and let's say we're to do... You can actually move a file, you can actually rename a file by moving it. So I could do this. Uh, which is something good to note. And it will actually, uh, it renamed this file right here. So that's something to keep in mind. Anyways, I guess that concludes this video. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe. Go and check out my other uh, batch videos, and I'll be making more in the future. Anyways, I guess that's all from Technology Crazy. Goodbye.